The Raven Miller primality test is a widely used test for determining whether a number is prime or composite. This video will go over the history of the test, the concepts that allow it to function, and some examples. The name of the test comes from two renowned computer scientists and mathematicians, Gary L. Miller and Michael O. Rabin. Miller presented an early test based off the extended Riemann hypothesis in his paper Riemann's Hypothesis and Test for Primality in 1976. Rabin built off the concepts that Miller discovered and published his findings and the algorithm as we use it today in 1980 with the title Probabilistic Algorithm for Testing Primality. Miller's test used a generalized Riemann hypothesis to prove its efficacy, but Rabin realized that he could write a better primality test with the same underlying concepts. Rabin's test today does not require the assumption of the GRH, but if the hypothesis is assumed, it can be shown that his test runs in polynomial time. So what exactly is the Rabin-Miller test? Well, let's perform it using n as the integer we want to test, and a, a random positive integer, as our first base. The first thing we need to do is a form of factoring on n minus 1, which is not prime since we are assuming that n is. We repeatedly divide n minus 1 until we reach an odd number and write it out as 2 to the k times q. Now that we have our k and q, we can begin testing for two cases. The first is if a to the q is congruent to 1 mod n. The second is if a to the 2 to the s times q is congruent to negative 1 mod n, where s is a randomly selected integer between k minus 1 and 0. So, what can these tests tell us? If n and base a fail both of the two tests, then we can say that n is certainly composite, and we can stop all further testing. However, if n and base a pass either test, the Rabin-Miller primality test cannot tell us whether n is prime or not, only that it is probably prime and that testing again with another value for a will increase that probability. These tests probably seem counterintuitive at first, but the concepts that they arise from are really very simple. The first is that if x squared is congruent to 1 mod p, where p is prime, x must be either positive or negative 1. Fermat's little theorem tells us that if n is prime, a to the n minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n, which means that all the square roots of a to the n minus 1 must be plus or minus 1. This is the reason that we factor n minus 1 into an odd integer and 2's. The two tests come from this idea. If a to the q is 1, all the subsequent squares, including a to the 2 to the k times q, which is a to the n minus 1, will be 1, and n base a satisfies FLT and passes the test. If a to the q is not equal to 1, but some a to the 2 to the s times q equals negative 1, all subsequent squares are 1, and n still passes. We don't check if it equals 1 since the first test failed, which ensures that this is the only way for FLT to still hold true. If neither test passes, a to the n minus 1 is not equal to 1 mod n, and therefore n must be composite. With all that in mind, let's go over an example. Suppose we want to determine whether 377 is a prime number. 
377 minus 1 is 2 to the third times 47, which gives us our k and q values. Next, we choose a random number for a, say 70. 70 to the 47 is congruent to 307, which is not equal to 1 mod 377. So, we continue to the second test to see if 377 base 70 passes. 70 to the 2 times 47 is equal to negative 1 mod 377. So base 70 passes and 377 could be prime. Let's try another random number, 147. 147 to the 47 is congruent to 374, which is not 1 mod 377. So we continue. 147 to the 2 times 47 is congruent to 9, which is not negative 1 mod 377, so we square again. 147 to the 47 times 2 squared is congruent to 81, which is, again, not negative 1 mod 377. If we squared again, we would reach 147 to the 47 times 2 cubed, which is 147 to the n minus 1, for Ma's little theorem. So, 377 fails both tests and must be composite. We can also say that 147 is a witness to the compositeness of 377. If a base passes the test, that is, either a to the q is equal to 1 mod n, or a to the 2 to the s times q is congruent to negative 1 mod n, it may or may not be prime. This is because not only do all primes satisfy Fermat's little theorem, but so do Carmichael numbers, meaning that our number could be either prime or a Carmichael number. While there are only 43 Carmichael numbers less than 1 million, there are an infinite amount of them, as proved by W.R. Alford, Andrew Granville, and Carl Pomerantz. This means that no matter how big the number you try to run the Raven-Miller test on, there is still a chance that the number is a Carmichael number. There is also the probability that the chosen base passes the test for a non-Carmichael composite number n. If it is not Carmichael, then at least one base will fail the test. So the accuracy of the Raven-Miller test hinges on how many random bases are attempted. Although, even trying every single possible base from 1 to n does not guarantee a prime, as n could still be a Carmichael number. Also known as absolute Fermat pseudoprimes, Carmichael numbers are named after American mathematician Robert Daniel Carmichael, who in 1910 discovered a series of composite numbers that passed Fermat's little theorem, a to the n minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n for all a relatively prime to n, even though previously it was thought that only prime numbers n could satisfy this theorem. The first instance he found was 561, which is 3 times 11 times 17. Since 561 is a Carmichael number, all numbers co-prime to it raised to the 560th power modulo 561 will equal 1, yet clearly 561 is known to be composite. For example, 2 to the 560th power is congruent to 1 mod 561, 19 to the 560th power is congruent to 1, and so on and so forth. He later went on to develop an algorithm to compute all possible Carmichael numbers. We hope now that you know more about the history and the concepts that allow it to function, you can understand the Raven-Miller primality test a little better. Underneath it all, the math involved is much simpler than it looks.